To lose weight, you've been told all you need to do is eat fewer calories than you burn. It's that simple. But you've been following your diet plan, carefully tracking your calories, eating exactly what your Fitbit or that online calculator told you to, and you're just not losing weight. So what gives? Is it that this whole energy in versus energy out equation is wrong? Or maybe your metabolism isn't playing by the rules? Well, technically the equation isn't wrong. It's just a heck of a lot more complicated than people think. So today I'd like to take a deep dive into metabolism and talk about why this energy balance equation is so complicated and why you're not losing weight. So the total amount of calories you burn in a day are determined by four major things. The first is your basal metabolic rate. This is also known as BMR. This is the amount of calories that your body burns just at rest. So the amount of calories it takes to circulate blood, to make your brain work, to make your organs work, that sort of thing. The number of calories burned mainly depends on your body composition, your total body size, whether you're a man or a woman, and it can vary wildly from person to person. So imagine a 100 pound woman. Their BMR might be as low as 1100 calories, whereas a 200 pound woman might be as high as 1700 calories. If we look at a 150 pound man, they might only burn 1700 calories compared to a 250 pound man who might burn up to 2400 calories. So you can see it varies a lot from person to person. 1100 to 2400, that's a huge difference. But it's important to remember that BMR makes up about 55 to 70% of the total calories burned in a day, depending on how active a person is. Next, we're gonna talk about the thermic effect of food. This is the amount of calories it takes for your body to process a food. So if you eat 100 calories in the form of fat, it's gonna take about three to five calories just to process that. If you eat 100 calories in the form of carbs, it's gonna take about 10 to 15 calories to process that. And if you eat 100 calories from protein, it's gonna take about 20 to 30 calories to process that. So as you can see, digesting and processing protein is a lot more expensive than processing the other macronutrients. Another way you burn calories is through exercise expenditure. So this is planned activities, things like cycling, running, speed walking, that sort of thing. And the amount of calories you burn through exercise is gonna depend on the duration of the exercise, the intensity of the exercise, and also how much weight and lean body mass a person has. So if they weigh more, it's probably gonna take more energy to move that person around. And finally, the last component of energy expenditure is something called NEAT. This is non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And this describes non-planned physical activity. So fidgeting, pacing, how you're posturing your body, all those sorts of things that are really more spontaneous and you don't consciously put effort into. Now that you understand the different components that determine how many calories are burned, let's talk about this energy balance equation or the energy in versus energy out. So the energy out is some of the stuff that we just talked about. The energy in portion is the amount of calories you eat, and also how many your calories your body has to draw from in the form of stored protein from your muscle, and fat cells, and even glycogen, which are stored carbs. So in terms of our energy balance equation, if you eat more calories than you burn, you're gonna gain weight. If you eat fewer calories than you burn, you're gonna lose weight. And if you're eating exactly what you're burning, you're maintaining your weight. So what's happening when you're not losing weight despite eating below your supposed energy needs, and carefully tracking your calories. Well, the equation isn't wrong, it's just incredibly complicated. Let's talk about how. The calories in part is more complex than just trying to track calories. There is a lot of room for error here. Your appetite and food choices are gonna affect how many calories you eat. Food labeling can cause errors, making you think that you're eating less than you are. And even the amount of calories you get from a given food can change based on food processing, your gut bacteria, and environmental factors. Your appetite is impacted by many things, namely appetite hormones. So two of the most famous appetite hormones are leptin and ghrelin. On a diet, as you drop calories and lose weight, leptin starts to drop as well. This can cause your metabolism to slow just a little bit, and it also is a signal to your brain that you're hungry. And ghrelin secreted from your stomach. And as you diet and as calories start to drop, ghrelin increases. And this tells your brain that you need more food and you're hungry. And there are also other appetite hormones like CCK, neuropeptide Y, and these along with others and leptin and ghrelin help stimulate appetite. 
And it's important to understand that dysregulation in this whole system can occur with dieting. So as your body weight drops and as you restrict calories, this signaling can get a little bit wonky, causing you to feel more hungry. And sometimes that is responsible for the weight rebound we see in people who have been doing extreme dieting. And complicating things even further is that your food choices can be determined by things outside of just appetite and appetite hormones. For example, if you're not getting enough sleep, this can cause you to turn towards more fat and sugary types of foods, which are high in calories, and that can contribute to weight gain or eating more than you think you are. And you're also impacted by things like psychological factors and social factors. So if you go out to eat and there's great food all around you, or if you're bored, you might find yourself eating more and even exercise. So when people exercise, some people tend to experience appetite suppression, whereas others tend to get more hungry and want to eat more food. So how much food you want to eat is impacted by a lot of different factors. And then there's calories and all of the error that can come from tracking. And this is where the calories in part of the equation gets even more murky. So just because a package says it contains a certain amount of calories doesn't mean that that's actually what you're getting. There can be error by as much as 20% in either direction. So if you buy a food that says 500 calories, you might be getting 400 calories or you might be getting 600 calories. That's a 200 calorie difference, it's pretty big. Food labels are also subject to rounding errors. If something has 50 or fewer calories, that label is gonna round it to the nearest five calories. If a serving has over 50 calories, it's gonna round it to the nearest 10 calories. But that's nothing compared to the 200 calorie difference we were talking about earlier. Also, it's not just what you eat, but what your body absorbs. And this can be impacted by both gut bacteria and the amount of processing done to a food. Food processing is any procedure that alters a food from its natural state. So this can include things like canning, mixing of a food, freezing, drying, right? Or even adding something to the food like excess protein to make it more thermogenic or adding fiber or even adding micronutrients or salt. Any of these things can impact health and body composition. Generally, people absorb fewer calories from less processed carbs and fats than they do from more processed. Let me tell you what I mean. We'll use nuts as an example. Let's take raw nuts versus a nut butter. So scientists have found that generally a person will absorb about 80% of what's on the label if they're eating raw nuts, whereas that value is closer to 100% with the nut butter. This goes the same for raw fruit versus something like a fruit juice. So the calories in the raw fruit are kind of locked up in this food matrix. And there's fiber in there. It's just gonna be harder to get those calories. So you might not absorb as much, whereas the fruit juice is a lot more refined and broken down and really easy to digest. So odds are you're gonna get about 100% of those calories. And the same goes for raw starches versus cooked starches. You may have noticed that when you cook something, it tends to be a lot easier to eat, easier on your stomach, seems to be easier to digest. Odds are you're gonna get a lot more of those calories. Whereas if something's raw, you have to rely more on gut bacteria and enzymes and stuff to break this down. It's gonna be a lot harder. It's gonna be harder to get calories from. Now, studies have even shown that with a starch like, let's say rice, if it's cooked and then cooled, that also affects the amount of calories that are absorbed from that. So once it's cooled, resistant starches tend to form and then you absorb even less of the energy from that. So, so much of the processing can really throw these question marks and wrenches into what you think is a perfect system. You think you're getting a certain amount of calories, but the truth is you may not be absorbing all of them, or you may be absorbing more than you think. And one final thing that affects the absorption of calories is gut bacteria. The types of gut bacteria colonizing your GI tract vary from person to person. And so does the amount of calories that these gut bacteria can extract. So some types of gut bacteria are a lot more efficient at extracting calories from food than others. So trying to determine how many calories you're taking in is a lot harder than people think. It's almost like you would have to live in a lab to do that accurately. Now the energy out part of the equation is also extremely complex. We talked a little bit about that earlier where I went over the different components that determine how many calories you burn, but understand that this can vary from day to day and from person to person. Let me tell you what I mean. The energy out part of the equation is not just static. So as you start to eat less and lose weight, your metabolism will slow down a little bit and conserve energy. So you may start burning fewer calories than you think you are. And the same goes if you increase the amount of food you eat, you'll tend to start burning more calories. So this is definitely like not a fixed number, you guys. 
So let's talk a little bit about how these components each change as you change the amount of food you take in. Your basal metabolic rate can drop beyond what would be expected just based on actual weight and lean body mass alone. So it can drop a little bit. And usually this change is only around a couple hundred calories, which is minor, but it can still make a little bit of a difference. And this is mediated by hormonal changes. Testosterone drops, thyroid hormones drop, your organs just start consuming less energy. Thermic effect of food can also drop, and this is because you're just eating less. The amount of energy you burn through exercise can also drop with dieting. And this happens because your body weight drops, right? So you have less weight to move around. You might also be a little bit lethargic, so you're just not exercising as hard. And even your mitochondria can adapt so that you're burning fewer calories for a given amount of work. And finally, NEAT, or non-exercise activity thermogenesis, can also drop. And this is because people just generally get fatigued. They start moving around less, they start to lean on things. All the things that happen when you're lethargic and diet, all this spontaneous movement that's really unconscious and unplanned just starts to dwindle. And here's an interesting fact. NEAT may be responsible for the biggest changes in energy expenditure that occurs when dieting or overfeeding. In one study, men were overfed by about 1,000 calories each for eight weeks. And what scientists saw was that the amount of fat gain between men varied by as much as tenfold. So some men's energy expenditure actually decreased by about 100 calories, whereas some increased by 700 calories. And it was all correlated with changes in NEAT. So again, NEAT is probably most responsible for metabolism increasing when being overfed or decreasing when a person is on a diet. So while the energy balance equation sounds really simple in principle, when it actually comes down to it, and you think about all of these things I just talked about, it really isn't. It's super complex. All of these variables make it really, really hard to figure out how much you're actually taking in, and how much you're absorbing, how much you're burning, and how much you're storing. So you might think that you're eating fewer calories than you're burning, but you're really not. But that doesn't mean the equation is wrong. You just need to find your sweet spot. So you might be asking, how do I do that? Well, one of the things that we advocate is tracking your calories and seeing how your body responds. And if you don't lose weight, then you know you need to drop calories further. And just try to be as accurate as possible, even though there's still like the labeling errors and the issues with absorption, just try to be accurate. That same amount of error is gonna carry over when you drop calories, so we're only interested in that change. And some of this can be a little bit complicated for people to figure out on their own, or they just want the accountability of having someone else tell them how much they should eat. And that's where Avatar comes in. So this is what makes us different from everybody out there, is that we don't just set your calories and macros. We actually see how much your body changed after a week, just like a coach would, and then we adjust those calories based on your progress. So if we find that the equation overshot your needs and you don't lose enough weight, simply weigh in and we'll change that amount of food and adjust things for you so that you do lose weight. So if you're an Avatar member, the system will do all the work for you. So if your goal is to lose weight and you've been tracking your calories carefully, you've been weighing your food, you're careful with your portion sizes, and you think you're eating exactly what you need to, but you're still not losing weight, you may need to drop calories down. But understand that the energy in versus energy out equation is not wrong. It's valid, it's just totally complicated.